On 700 Club Interactive, we use technology to pray for each other and explore topics that matter to you. Watch what God is doing in the world today. Well, good morning and welcome to 700 Club Interactive. Doctors say there are at least 14 bones in the human face, and Michael McKay broke them all after his head slammed into the steering wheel of his truck during an accident. As the chances for Michael's survival looked bleak, he got help from a team of doctors and an army of prayers. The TV was on, and I happened to see this breaking news story about a wreck, and I said to myself, whoever was in that wreck, they, had, they didn't make it. Gary and Yvonne McKay heard on the news that one person had died and another was critically injured in an accident near their home. What they didn't know was that one of them was their 22-year-old son, Michael. Michael was a kid that uh, had a lot of goals, a lot of drive. He started playing football at age six. He was a sweet little kid, never gave me any problems. He loved God and he, he was a Christian. Michael McKay was a model student and athlete a star quarterback at Campbell High School in Georgia and later at Gardner-Webb University. Michael had a tryout scheduled with a professional football team in the fall of 2000. That summer, he took a job delivering auto parts. He had an opportunity to go play arena ball, and he was one week away. Michael was on top of the world, but everything changed the morning of September 9th, 2000. Michael was sitting at a red light when a BMW traveling at nearly 100 miles an hour hydroplaned and hit him head on. Michael's delivery truck flipped over five times and landed on top of another car. He was then rushed to Cobb General Hospital in Atlanta. Michael had bilateral orbital fractures around his eyes, nasal fracture, jaw fracture. Um, he had liver problems from contusion of his liver, acquired a gastrostomy tube, a tracheostomy. He was on mechanical ventilation for a while. The hospital staff called Yvonne to let her know, but failed to convey exactly how dire the situation was. When I got there, uh, one of the ladies that worked with Michael told me, you can't pick him up because they are working on him. And I said, what do you mean they are working on him? And she said, you don't know. And I said, no, I do not know. And one of the other nurses said, well, that uh, he may not make it. Several hours later, she was finally allowed to see her son. That was the longest hallway that I ever could have walked. And he was just laying there, the facial swelling. And I'm thinking, what's gonna happen to my baby? Michael had bleeding and hemorrhage down into his basal ganglia, which is well down into the center of the brain. Many people who have this severe an injury do not recover. I was asking God to put him back because it was just like Humpty Dumpty. And that's what I was asking, to help put him back, back to where he was or close to where he was. Yvonne the called her pastor and family and friends who set up a prayer chain that spread across several states. The classmates from peewee ball, high school, college people, the neighbors, my friends, and we had, he had 300 of his friends and students and classmates to show up. They even thought that he was a celebrity at one point. So all of my friends, we had this network of prayer, people just praying constantly to keep him here. While his mother continued to pray at the foot of her son's bed, Michael slipped into a coma. They tried to convince me to let him go, and I kept telling them, no, he wasn't going. Uh, they didn't know who I know. I had the faith he wasn't going. At one point, the doctor came in and looked at him and said, well, Michael's in there somewhere. The family and friends continued their prayer vigil around the clock. Then one day, Michael's eyes fluttered open. To me, that was one of the signs that he was going to make it. As I was coming out of the coma, it was really a big state of confusion because I, I asked um, my family, I was like, 
how did I get here in this hospital? What am I doing here? Because I didn't realize I, was, I had been in an accident. Although it was a positive sign, Michael still had a long way to go. I went through five and a half years of rehab and three years of physical therapy. It was just like having a child again. They had to hoist him out the bed because his whole left side was paralyzed. I would put a pen or pencil in his hand to help him to rewrite alphabets and numbers. Today, Michael is about 95% recovered from his accident and has very few limitations. He is coaching middle school football and eventually hopes to pursue a career in broadcasting. To purify gold and silver, you have to put it under a flame and burn the impurities out. And that was, I feel that was God's time of putting me under the flame, burning those impurities out of me. But while you're going through it, he's maturing you. Rather than questioning God or being bitter about his experience, Michael is grateful to be alive and healthy again and says his faith is now stronger than ever. Jesus, he really is my everything. And I pray every night that people don't see me, that I'm a reflection of him and that he shines through me. I have seen a number of cases as severe as his, uh, but certainly none that have done any better than he has done. He's done remarkably well. Perfect. Yes. As much as we could give him, we did, but uh, there were other forces that I can't explain scientifically that took care of Michael. Michael and his family believe it's no mystery. It's a testament to the power of prayer. You can never get prayed for enough because another cool aspect I love about Jesus, he says you can come to him at any time, any day, at all times. He listens to prayers and answers them according to his will. So that's a beautiful thing to know that I'm in his will for me to be able to recover as I did. I don't care what any naysayers might think, prayer works. And you're in his will. Don't doubt that. You're in His will. It's His will to heal. He wants to do it. He died for you. And we're going to be praying for your healing in just a minute, so stay tuned. But first, a young man with, a, with chest pains gets a big shock from his doctor. Getting that news after having never been sick before in my life, it was almost like I was starring in an episode of The Twilight Zone. See how this man beat cancer against all the odds. A devoted Christian sets out to change the fashion industry. I was just really stoked and just wanted to spread the message. Why he fell. Next thing I know, I'm like smoking weed every day. I'm smoking weed every hour. I just became a totally different person. And how he became a model believer on today's 700 Club Interactive. I was having some pains between my shoulder blades. At that point, everything changed. Diagnosis, pancreatic cancer. First, there was prayer. The second is to fight. As soon as we walked through those doors at Cancer Treatment Centers of America, all my anxiety left. The pastoral care here is based on the Bible, based on the Word of God, just as it is at our own church. When you combine the great medicine with the spiritual resources we have, it provides the patients with something that really can make a difference. You got a pastor right there on staff praying with patients, and whether it be scripture or whether it just be a word of encouragement to say, God's got this. If you or someone you love is fighting complex or advanced stage cancer, go to cancercenter.com forward slash faith. You'll learn how our treatment results compare to national averages and see a list of insurance plans with which we've worked. Advanced medicine and technology, the warm embrace of the spirit. I firmly believe God led me here. Call or go to cancercenter.com. Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Care that never quits. Appointments available now. Come to the Holy Land and walk in the footsteps of Jesus. From Nazareth to the birthplace of his ministry, the shores of Galilee. Stand where he stood. Be baptized in the Jordan River. Hallelujah, he is everlasting. Ask your pastor or visit GoIsrael.com to learn more about making the journey that will transform your faith in God and his word. Experience Israel. You'll never be the same. Daniel Fazina had a tumor in his chest that was so large it was suffocating him. Doctors said he could be dead in three months or three weeks. And yet before the tumor was discovered, Daniel had never been sick a day in his life. 27-year-old Daniel Fazina never saw it coming. I developed strange sensations in my chest. Uh, it eventually turned into pain and it was radiating down my right side into my arm. 
He drove himself to the emergency room. The doctor ordered x-rays and CT scans. The doctor came back and he said, well, we found something and it's a rather large mass in your chest. And I asked him, well, how large is rather large? And he said, it's grapefruit sized. And he said, this is very serious. You need to get it evaluated immediately. I had to go get a biopsy. And, uh, you know, it took about a week or so to get the results. And when the doctor called me, it was, as he feared, uh, lymphatic cancer. It was shocking. It was surreal. Um, didn't quite sink in at first. Getting that news after having never been sick before in my life, it was almost like I was starring in an episode of The Twilight Zone. It was that surreal. Daniel called his girlfriend, Sahani, who was a med student. It was definitely shock. Um, and you know, you hear the word cancer and you just automatically associate it with death and dying and end of life. His tumor was so large that when he had shown me his PET scan, I had looked at it and I said, oh, well, that's your heart. And he goes, actually, no, that's my tumor. It wasn't the cancer itself that was the threat. It was the actual physical size that, that was the threat. It was crushing this major artery. We kind of were forced to go through chemo. And the way the doctors uh, said, you know, we're gonna give you a form of chemo that is relatively a palliative form. We don't expect that you're gonna get better, um, but you have to do something. They weren't sure if it was gonna respond, but without it, he said I would be dead within a matter of three weeks to three months. It was crushing his pulmonary artery, which means his lungs were not getting blood, which means there was no oxygenated blood going to the rest of his body. So he was literally suffocating to death because of this tumor. Daniel started his six month regime of various types of chemo. My whole body was just in pain, almost like burning on, on the inside of me. I was too weak to walk. Um, you know, your GI tract and your gums, everything gets sore. He couldn't keep anything down and he was just dry heaving um, to the point where he was probably vomiting bile because it was green. My heart just broke for him because I was like, gosh, I was like, God, I will take his place. Just let me do anything I can to take his suffering away. And there is nothing, you know. Um, and you try to have faith that there's going to be glory that's going to come out of it, but you don't in that moment. You just don't. So those were, those were some dark moments. Friends and family visited Daniel in the hospital. I had so many people praying for me. I had people prophesying to me, saying this thing was born to die. It's going to be a testimony to the Lord. Just praying for him and for us and for his parents. And you just felt the whole week like they were there with you. Um, you know, there, you just felt like there were angels praying for you the whole time. You just felt their presence, and it was amazing. People anointed me with oil and praying over me, both in the hospital and, and after I got out. And I remember the pastor saying, you need to just cry out to God and let him know that you need him. And because I was really holding everything inside. And it was at that point when my friends were laying hands on me in the church, I just got down on my knees and just the floodgates opened. I was crying hysterically, um, just crying out to God, saying, God, I need you, I need you. And I had never done that before. That was a big step for me. Daniel went back to the hospital for his next treatment. The tumor had gotten bigger. It was crushing my pulmonary artery. I was suffocating. And I remember being in the hospital bed, um, literally dying. And I remember just looking up to God and saying, you know what, if you want to take me, I'll go with you. I know I'm your child. Your word says that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, and I believe that. But I said, if you want to heal me and let me live, I'll just do my best to share with the world your goodness, your grace, your love, your mercy, your power. And uh, that was really a turning point for me, learning to let go and to just trust the Lord. Daniel went in for tests at the midway point of his chemo. Halfway through the treatments, when they took that second scan, uh, which they were just hoping the tumor would be smaller, and it came back completely negative, like just gone. I remember walking out of the radiology place, it was just before Christmas, I'm looking up to heaven, it was a beautiful day, crystal clear blue sky and just tears raining down my eyes, just saying, thank you, Lord, thank you. It was the best Christmas gift I ever had.
that does not happen. Uh, I mean, I saw that tumor, it was ginormous. And I said, this doesn't just go away. Well, not only was it not there, there wasn't even scar tissue. Usually when tumors retract, um, there is some type of scar tissue that's left behind. Um, and there wasn't anything. Words can't even describe the feeling. I mean, I mean, walking on air, coming out of this place, holding this picture in my hand of a completely normal PET scan, whereas three months earlier, I had this ominous tumor threatening my very life. Words can't describe the feeling, you know, being able to tell my family and my friends that I'm gonna be okay. It was just amazing. Daniel and Sahani married in 2003. Sahani graduated from med school in 2007. Today, she's a podiatrist, and Daniel is the producer and host of Divine Intervention, a popular radio show about modern day miracles. It was the faith of my friends and my family who came around me and just girded me up and prayed for me. And I'm reminded all the time of the story in the Gospel of Mark, I believe it is, where the four friends are carrying the paralytic friend to Jesus and they have to go through the crowd and they have to go up on the roof and lower him down because of the crowd. And it says that when Jesus saw their faith, he healed the paralytic. I don't know whether the paralytic had faith or not, but I know his friends did. And sometimes that's what you need. You need people around you to, to really gird you up, pray for you and bring you into the presence of Jesus. And that's what happened in my case. An amazing story of prayer answered, of heartfelt plea heard. And I know that there are many of you who are with us today, and you have things going on in your life, and you'd like to be prayed for. We have heard from some of you asking for prayer. Here are a pair of those requests. Uh, here's um, Marianne who says, I've been diagnosed with lupus. My mother died from the same disease, and I'm afraid I'll die too. I need God to heal me. And then there's Betsy who says, I've had a rare blood disorder since 2009. I was sure that God was going to heal me. I feel fine now, but I still have the disease. Please pray for healing and for peace. And so we want to pray for you as well right now, whatever your need might be. Um, pray for Marianne. Pray for Betsy. You know, very often the story is as we pray for someone else's need, even though God hears the cry in our own hearts, we are healed. You know, when Job prayed for his friends, that's when God restored everything to him. When we get out of our own need and start praying for others, that's when miracles can start to happen. Did you hear what Sahani said in that piece? I wanted so much to take his place. Here I'm seeing the, the man I love. I see him suffer. I see the pain. I see the size of that tumor. Can I take his place? Well, that's what Jesus did for you and me. And when we imitate what he did, when he sees that, when we're willing to reach out to others, even though we have a need, when we're willing to pray for our friends, that's when miracles happen. When he sees our faith, that's when our friend, the paralytic, gets healed. And in that process, we get healed too because we understand the greatness of his power towards us who believe. Now, we've seen some amazing miracles in this program. What about you? What about some amazing miracles for you? What about some amazing miracles for those who've written in these prayer requests, for those who have them in the chat room right now? What about for you? Could this be your day? All it takes on your part is to believe and to hope. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. So just look to Jesus. Look to his example where he said, Father, I don't want to see my brothers, my sisters, I don't want to see them suffering anymore. Can I take their place? And when you understand he's done that for you, he's taken your place. He's carried away all your disease, all your pain. He's done it for you. And all you have to do is receive it. So Terry and I are going to pray, and we're going to agree. And Jesus said, if two or more of you agree touching anything, it shall be done. So I want, what I want you to do in an act of faith, lay your hand on that area of the body that needs healing, that's in pain, and let's let Jesus do it for you. He says he'll do it. Let's just believe him. Let's just trust him and see what will happen to you. 
Let's pray. Lord, we lift the needs of the audience to you, and as people are laying hands on that area of the body that needs healing, we join with them. And we join with the prayers of all who are saying, I want to pray now for my family. I want to pray for my friends. I want to pray for those who are in need. And for these who have written in with their prayer requests, for those in the chat room, we pray over them and we agree with them, touching them. And we say, be healed now in Jesus' name and be restored. There's someone you've got uh, pain, it's, it's sort of a weird one, it's, it's numb pain that's in your right shoulder and uh, shoots down into your elbow and it's just discomfort and it's, it's just difficult to live with. God is healing that, He's restoring it, He's putting everything back into place and what was stressed and injured is injured no more. Just receive His healing now in Jesus' name. Uh, there's a woman, you've just done um, a whole series of exams and they've discovered a lump in your right breast and it's beginning to cause you pain and you're very worried about it. And God wants to take all that anxiety, all that worry and just heal you right now in Jesus' name. He is able to dissolve that lump. He's able to carry it away. He's able to take all of that away from you now. So be healed and be restored in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Tara? Father, I want to pray for Mary Ann. And God, we just come against a spirit of fear in her life. And, and Father, I ask that the joy of the Lord would be her strength, that she could walk this day so trusting in you, the joy would rise up in her heart, and that there would be no anxiety, no fear, that that diagnosis that she's had, God, would be gone in Jesus' name. And Father, for Betsy also, as she is has this rare blood disease. Thank you that she's feeling well. Thank you that she's had a turnaround, that she's feeling whole. Now, Lord, we pray that the very blood that you shed for her for remission of sins, God, would also flow through her body and totally heal her, taking away that condition. Give her peace of heart and peace of mind in you, Lord Jesus. Uh, there's a woman named Lori. You've got a sprain in your left knee and God's healed that. He's giving you back full movement and all that pain just left you in, in, in an instant. And God just wants you to know He's called you by name. He cares for you. He's watching over you. He's going to see you through. Just put your trust in Him and receive it now in Jesus' name. There's also someone, you have some kind of a condition that that um, involves the word dysplasia. It might be your hip. I'm not sure. God's healing that condition for you right now. Lord, we thank you for you are the healer. You are the restorer. You are our salvation. And when we receive you, we receive the answer to all our needs. Be with us now, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you've been touched by God, we want to share in your good report. So call us. Numbers toll free, 888-777-1999. And we believe in pre prevailing prayer. So if you need prayer 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we want to be there with you. So call us, 888-777-1999. Terry? Well, still ahead, a family making just $150 a month affords life-saving heart surgery. Their miracle is next, so don't go away. What would you do in a medical emergency? This is Life Alert. Are you okay? Help! I've fallen and I can't get up. I'm calling for help right now. Fire emergency. Sharon, we received a smoke signal coming from your kitchen. Get out now. We're calling the fire department. Home intrusion. <laughs> Emergencies away from home. I think someone may be following me. I'm right here and we'll stay on the line with you and we can contact the police if necessary. If it weren't for Life Alert, I wouldn't be sitting here today. Life Alert saves a life from a catastrophe every 11 minutes. For a free Life Alert brochure, call 1-800-524-6320. That's 1-800-524-6320. Call now at 1-800-524-6320 to get a free brochure. 1-800-524-6320. 1-800-524-6320. If you're living with diabetes and have Medicare or private insurance, 
Here is some great news. Call United States Medical Supply today and we'll send you the smallest glucose meter in the world, absolutely free. So small, it fits right on the bottle of strips. It only takes a speck of blood and it gives me my results in five seconds. I can even test it on my own. And there's no coding for easier, more accurate results. And if you call now, we'll also send you this stylish full featured meter at no charge. That's two free meters. You can keep one in your pocket and leave the other one at home. You can even hook it up to your computer so your doctor can track your results. United States Medical Supply also delivers prescription medication right to my door so I don't have to go to the drugstore anymore. Don't let diabetes get in the way of living. Give us a call today at United States Medical Supply and get the smallest meter in the world for free. Call today. CBN TV on CBN.com. All the video you love in one easy to use location. Today, Wen Yu is a happy, healthy little girl who loves to play with her friends. And yet, not long ago, her parents were worried that she wouldn't live to see her seventh birthday. Six-year-old Wen Yu just wanted what all the other kids had, some friends. But she was slower and smaller than everyone else. And the harder she tried to make friends, the more she got rejected. I remember one day when my sister was in gym class. She was running and trying to keep up with her classmates. But she fell down, and everybody laughed at her. Sometimes I even saw other kids pushing her down. It made me so sad. Wen Yu was born with a hole in her heart and a weak immune system. Her parents were poor and did everything they could to treat their daughter's condition. I worked early in the morning and till after dark, all to help my little girl. I wanted her to be healthy and have a comfortable life, more than anything else in the world. But Mr. Fawn only made $150 per month. That covered Wen Yu's medicine, which was helpful at first. But soon the medicine started eating away at the little girl's sensitive stomach. Then temperatures dropped below zero, and Wen Yu got pneumonia. I will never forget the way she looked. Her face was burning red, and she couldn't breathe. I was so afraid that I was going to lose my sister. I wished that somehow I could just take her pain on myself. The whole family knew that Wen Yu's only hope was a heart surgery that they couldn't afford. Then they heard about CBN. It was like I was a thirsty man who had just found a will. I told myself that I would do anything for their help. But I didn't have to do anything. CBN called me and told me they had already arranged for surgery for Wen Yue. I thought I was dreaming. The surgery was a success. Today, Wen Yu's heart and immune system are strong. When I saw the smile on my daughter's face for the first time, my withered heart came back to life. I love to watch her run and jump. You saved Wen Yue, and you saved my family, too. How difficult it must be to know that your child has a treatable condition, is going to die if nothing happens to help her, and you can't do it because you don't have the means. If you're a 700 Club member, you allowed us to step right into that need and save that little girl's life. She's a beautiful child with a whole new future filled with hope. Thank you. Join the 700 Club. You'll be making that kind of a difference every single day somewhere in the world. We say thank you. It's 65 cents a day, $20 a month. All you have to do is call that number on your screen, 888-777-1999. Gordon? Well, we leave you this word from Jeremiah 17. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for you are my praise. Realize today that God himself has become your salvation, your way of finding the answer to every human need, all made possible because he sent his son, Jesus Christ. Live that today, be that today, and God bless you.